Want to make some interesting images where you fill in your shadows using colored gels? I'm going to tell you how to do it on today's episode of... Ask David Bergman! Hey everybody, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions. Yes, I've still got my quarantine hair. Hopefully I'll be able to get it cut in a few weeks. Until then, you can put up with the mange uh, that I've got here. But in the meantime, if you've got photo questions, you know what to do. Go to AskDavidBergman.com, fill out the form on that site. I just might pick your question to answer here on a future show. Also, hopefully you're already a subscriber to the Adorama YouTube channel. We've got so much free content for you every week right here on YouTube. All you gotta do is hit that subscribe button down below, use the little bell icon, you'll be notified as soon as new photo shows come out all week long for myself and the other photo hosts here on Adorama TV. Also, I've mentioned I'm doing a show on my own YouTube channel called From the Vault, where I take a look back at some of the images from my 30-year archive and I tell the behind-the-scenes story of how those pictures were made. I will put a link in the description. I hope you'll go over there and subscribe. Check it out, and th I think you'll enjoy it. All right, let's get right to today's question. I've got one sent in from Tuan H. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm sorry if I've mangled your name, but Tuan wants to know... I'm having a problem trying to create colored shadows using three lights with red, green, and blue gels. Can you explain how to correctly create this effect? Thanks so much, Tuan, for sending that in. This is a really cool effect that works really well. You need to be able to control the light. You need to be either indoors in a studio setting if you can. If you don't have a studio, you just have to be able to control the light. Outdoors, this won't work with too much ambient light. You have to be able to shut off the ambient light and just work with, probably with strobes, it also will work with um, constant lights as well, but you need really powerful ones to overpower the ambient. Now, I'm here in my small studio. We're still sort of in quarantine here in New York City, so I'm not really working with models that much. Um, but what I'm doing is I have a piece of software I've mentioned before called Set a Light 3D. It's a fantastic piece of software that's a virtual photo studio, and I can combine any number of lights that I want. I could put models and objects and all kinds of things in my scene, and it's very accurate. It's amazingly accurate as far as how the lights work and how they fall. So it's a great piece of software to use for experimenting. You can work all day long in this thing. I know I've seen people create amazing final products with this, but I use it to experiment and see how lights are gonna fall. Of course, I also use it to demo uh, lighting techniques as well for you guys. Um, I bought this software on my own, and I liked it so much that I contacted the company and told them how much I liked it and that I have a YouTube channel for you guys. And they were nice enough to give me a discount code, 15% uh, off. It's Bergman-15. I will put a link in the description to uh, the link to the software along with that coupon code. I hope you'll check it out. There's a free trial. If you like it, pick it up and uh, you can try this however you want. All right, let's get to trying to make this happen now. Now, the way this works is you come into your software here and on the right side, you've got, you can set you can set up the windows however you want, but how I've got mine set up, on the right is my studio. I'm here in a nice big studio space, much bigger than this one here. On the left, it will be the view through my camera. You can see I've got no ambient light now. There's no, I've got, uh, there's absolutely no ambient. I've got no strobes set up, nothing yet. All my camera settings are up here. I'm shooting with a full frame camera, probably a Canon, of course. Um, three to two, which is standard 35 millimeter uh, ratio, three by two. You can shoot 16 by nine. You can shoot square, however you want. Got my white balance set and my lens and my settings. Not really that important un under these circumstances. Then what you do is you come down here and you can pick what lights you want. They've got all these monolights with uh, standard reflectors of different sizes. They've got speed lights, uh, permanent lights, which are you know like constant lights. Um, Aries and things like that. Um, helpers, which are diffuser panels, reflectors, and um, you know different backgrounds, and then props like chairs and couches and things like that. So, and you can add your own uh, props as well. And then you've got your models. There are a number of different models. Each model, you select the one you want. You can change hair, clothes, head position, posing, everything you can, anything you can imagine, you can absolutely change. So. It's really fantastic for doing this kind of work. Now, let's start with, uh, I've got some lights already in here that I've got hidden. So if I was setting up just a regular softbox, it would look like this, right? This is just a standard, probably like a, let's see which softbox I've got on here. This is the uh, 24 by 36, two by three foot uh, softbox, right? So it's nice soft light. I've got it sort of in a Rembrandt position. Maybe I'll raise it up just a little bit to give me more of that um, shadow, that, that angular shadow that defines Rembrandt a little bit. Um, you can see it's pretty evenly lighting the background. I'm in a cove here, so on a psych. 
So we got a few shadows, but nothing major, right? So that's kind of a standard setup. Here's my camera, of course. Now, what Tuan was asking about is using gels to create shadows. So let's get rid of that softbox and get into more of a hard light. A softbox is a soft light, right? That's why it's called that. A hard light is gonna be a smaller light modifier. So if we go ahead and turn on this light here, right? This now is a, I've got a, a snoot on here, so it's a very narrow uh, light source. And I've got a green reflector. Now you can put, excuse me, a green gel. You can pick any color gel you want. You can even, if you wanna go ahead and pick a hex color, you can do that however you want. I just went with uh, primary green, because that's green, right? So you can see now the effect of that, right? It's a little underexposed, but for the most part, everything that's being hit by that light is green, right? That's exactly what I'd expect. There's a green gel. There's no ambient light to mix with. It's just green, and that's what we're getting. So our subject is being lit by the green. The background's being lit by the green, except for this shadow. And because it's a hard light, it's a small light modifier, it's going to give me a pretty hard shadow. That's not a soft shadow. That's a pretty defined shadow on the gray backdrop. I've got gray so that it's neutral and doesn't affect any of my colors. So, so again, light is hitting everywhere except where it's being blocked by her and creating that shadow. Now, if we go ahead and add another light, let's add this red light in here, okay? So I've got my second light here with a red gel on it, primary red, just standard red. Now, let's look at what's happening in our photograph. The light that's hitting her is she's being hit by both red and green, right? And red and green together is sort of this yellow color, right? I forget my color wheel sometimes, but it's this, it's this orangey yellow color, right? So, um, so any place those two lights are hitting, both lights are hitting, light is additive, right? So any place those both lights are hitting, her and most of the background is gonna turn that, that yellow color. Now let's look at the shadows though. Why are the shadows different colors? Well, if we turn off the red again, we can see where that shadow is, there's no green light hitting. There's no green light hitting there. So then when I turn on the red light, the red light is gonna hit not only, it's hitting the whole scene, but in here where there was no green light hitting, it's only being hit by red light, right? Does that make sense? It was black before, so now it's not being hit by any green because she's blocking that green. So where the red is hitting, but the green is not, it's gonna be red. It's gonna be solid red. Now over here, conversely, the red light, if we turn off the green, the, there's no red light hitting in this shadow over here, right? If we only have the red on, it's lighting everything except that area. So the green is essentially filling in where that shadow is. So by using this technique, we can get really creative here, right? So let's add one more. Let's add a blue light. And you can see I've got my three lights in here and the blue light in the middle. And that is now creating the same kind of effect where the blue is not hitting the blue is not, because if we turn off everything except the blue, you can see the blue, sorry, the blue is right here. The blue is the one in the middle, right? So there's no blue hitting the middle. So if we have on all three, in that middle portion, there's no blue. So what's it being hit by? It's being hit only by green and red, which is giving me yellow, right? So now we've got our three different colored shadows. But here's the other thing to know. Look at the light on her. The light on her, she's being hit by what? She's being hit by all three lights, red, green, and blue. That's RGB. RGB together makes up white light. So our red, green, and blue mixed together is white. So the light hitting her is white. It's a neutral white color. So she looks like she's being lit by a normal white light, but yet we've got these three distinct colored shadows in the background, right? This is limited only by your imagination. I mean, you can have as much fun with this. You can play with different colored gels. Um, there are literally limitless ways to do this. But that's the theory, is that whatever's being, wherever your shadows are, you can then fill in with another light. Um, it's possible to do a picture where you have your subject being lit with, let's say, a softbox, right? And maybe in that Rembrandt standard lighting. But then the other side of them, you're lighting with um, a colored gel, and you can have it so that the only place you're seeing that colored gel, that colored light, is in the shadows because the white light overpowers the color of that gel. So if I had a cool gel, let's say a bluish gel on one side, um, it would only fill in those shadows. And it can be a really cool effect. And again, there are a limitless amount of ways you can play with this. So 
That's the basic concept. Once you've got, if you use RGB, those mixed together, red, green, and blue, are gonna give you white. Use that to your advantage if that's how you want your subject to look. If you wanna create all kinds of different colors, you can do that as well. So Tuan, I hope that answers your question. I appreciate you asking it. Um, if you guys like this video, hit the like button. You can comment down below if you have more questions about it. I'll do my best to answer. Remember to subscribe. Check out this software if you think it's interesting and will help you uh, to experiment with your photography. Keep those photo, photo questions coming at AskDavidBergman.com. You can check that out. And remember, I'm back here every Monday, 10 a.m. Eastern, with a brand new question. I hope you'll check it out. I'll see you back here next week. Maybe eventually I'll have a haircut right here on Ask David Bergman.